Hi, this is Dr. John Tierno, Executive Pastor at Resurrection Christian Community Church on Hilton Head Island in South Carolina. Although Christmas has just passed, the eternal message brought to the world by God in the person of His Son, Jesus Christ, is a gift which keeps on giving. The video which follows will place this gift in perhaps a slightly different context, one which you can relate to and, more importantly, apply in your everyday life. And please remember, Jesus is the reason for every season. Shalom. Amen and amen. A blessed Christmas, and remember, Jesus is the reason for the season, please. Let's not forget that. My message has almost been preached already. Um, between what was prayed, Kathy led in with my first scripture, John 3 and 16. But I'm going to approach things a little bit differently today. I got a call this morning from, I think it was the North Pole, and said that there was a gift here for me. And I was told that I could pick it up, but I could not open it until after the message was delivered. So we will see what's in this very pretty little box, uh, the gift, at the end of the message. We're in a season where gift giving is central to Christmas. Unfortunately, it's central to Christmas and not the other 364 days of the year. Because giving should be within the nature of a Christian. But we seem to emphasize it at this time of the year. And what I'd like to do is look at the gift from two different standpoints. I'm going to look at it from a secular standpoint, a very worldly standpoint, and then transition that in to Scripture, because the tie is beautiful, it's tight, and it's there. We can have that next slide, please, with the four elements are there. A gift must be, and this is not deep theology, guys, must be given. If a gift isn't given, it's not a gift. Okay? I, I think that's pretty simple, straightforward thinking. So it must be given first must be received. Greatest gift in the world, if it is not received, is really meaningless. So there's a requirement on the part of the person to whom the gift is being given to receive it. Everybody with me? Number three, in some way we need to understand that gift. Maybe not at the intellectual level, but at some level so we can then, number four, use the gift. Does that make sense? Pretty simple. Given, received, understood, used or applied. Yes? yes? Yes. Okay, now, let's look at it from a spiritual standpoint. Let's go to that first uh, scripture, John 3 and 16. First scripture, please. For God so loved the world, we've heard it already, that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Obviously, the operative word there is gave. So right away we see from a spiritual standpoint that the gift is already beginning to fall into the give, receive, understand, use mode. God gave. God gave the greatest gift known to humankind. The greatest gift known to humankind. And we unfortunately have a tendency to attach too much value to physical things. Things that will perish. God will not perish. My word will not perish. It will be with you forever. I will be with you forever until the end of the age. And then what happens? We'll be with him for eternity. When this age ends, we will be with him for eternity. The greatest gift to man was given 2,000 years ago. Given 2,000. Freely given. You will not see a bill in February to pay for the gift. It was given freely. Second scripture, Deuteronomy 38, 19. And this is one we've been using a lot lately. This day I call heaven and earth as witness against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. Now again, we must choose. Given, understood. In choosing, we understand or choose. We make a conscious effort to receive the gift. Everybody with me? Everybody's kind of sleepy here this morning. Yes? Okay. Let's go to the third scripture, please. John 14 and 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Understanding. That is the truth. Jesus is the truth. 
That is the understanding we as believing Christians must bring to the gift of salvation. In that understanding, as we yield to the presence of the Holy Spirit within us, who is truly our teacher, the understanding we will get is that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father lest he come through the Son, Jesus Christ. There is no other way. That is the truth. That is the understanding that we must have. Now, where do we find all of that which Jesus has chosen to reveal and share with us? Right here, 66 books and two testaments. It's called His Revealed Will. This is where understanding comes from. I am the way, the truth, and the life. That is so all-encompassing. Let me make a suggestion to brothers and sisters. I pray that everybody meditates on the Word of God. If you don't, you should. It's a great way to come to know God in a deeper, more intimate way. Meditate on the Word of God. Chew on it. Kind of get the flavor of it. I got something the other day in the mail from Omaha Steaks. And I looked at that picture and I said, Woo, that looks good. I can almost taste the, the flavor of that steak. Well, the Word of God is very brothers and sisters. When you really begin to chew on it, you begin to meditate on it, and you go before the throne of grace and you say, Father, reveal to me your son, your daughter, the truth in that Word. And watch what God begins to do. The Word will become alive to you. And as it becomes alive to you, it makes it much easier to apply that word in your life. Which brings us to the final scripture. James 1 and 23. Book of James is a great book. There's a tremendous amount of teaching and learning that can be done in the book of James. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. Be a doer. Greatest gift in the world, Jesus Christ. If you understand him, as the Messiah, as Mashiach, as the Christ, as the Anointed One, and you don't apply what He's asking you to apply, it is useless. Do not, hear me well, brothers and sisters, do not be satisfied with salvation alone. Do not. That is not the call of the Christian in the earth. Never was, never will be. We are given the very presence of Jesus Christ and the person of His Holy Spirit that we may be, doers of the word, that we may go out into the world and touch the world with the truth and the love and the compassion and the forgiveness of the risen Christ, Jesus. That is what a Christian's responsibility is. Now notice I said a Christian's responsibility. I did not say the fivefold ministry. I did not say the pastors in the church. I did not say elders or deacons. It is the responsibility of each and every one of us to do that. The greatest gifts I have received have been through the ministry of God's Word. I will say that unequivocally. The sense of satisfaction that comes, not from the person on the receiving end, but from God Himself, when you are about His business, when you do what He's asked you to do, and He whispers that quiet couple of words into your heart, well done, son. Well done, daughter. That is the greatest gift anyone can receive. Why? It's very simple. It's coming from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It's eternal. It's immutable. It's unchanging. You're hearing the heart of God. And then you know what happens? It's beautiful. It fuels you. It affirms you. It allows you to know that you are, in fact, about the King's business. That you are His child. You are His son. You are his daughter. You've heard him, you've obeyed, you've understood, and you've become a doer. If you're looking for joy in this season, brothers and sisters, try that on for size. You may find joy in lights. You may find joy in a tree or in a present. But a joy that surpasses all human understanding only comes from being obedient to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It is the greatest joy known to humankind. It's really very simple. We have, and it's a conversation that Pastor Len and I have had many, many times, we as man have a tendency to complicate God's Word. Theology can become so deep, so boring, thank you, so boring, so cumbersome, that we walk away saying, God, I don't understand. Now think about it. 
Why would God present himself in any way that we didn't understand? Does that make any sense to you? Forget the presence of the Holy Spirit for a moment. Does that make any sense to you whatsoever? That God would step out of eternity into our time and space to die on Calvary's cross, rise again after three days, ascend into heaven, visibly seen by hundreds, so that we may not understand him? It defies logic. We complicate it. It's simple. And it becomes simpler as you go before God and say, Father, I read. Now you, as my teacher, as my Lord, as my lover, as my Father, as my Savior, reveal truth to me. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what this season is all about, brothers and sisters. It's recognizing what happened 2,000 years ago and how it still continues in beauty and passion and love and as powerful as it was 2,000 years ago in that little town of Bethlehem where there was no place for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So he chose to step out of glory and take the form of a child in a dirty old stable, be laid in a manger. That story hasn't changed. Do you walk in that truth? Do you walk in that humility? Do you walk in that conviction that you are a child of the living God who has been called to his mission here on earth? It's not the mission of Resurrection Church, the mission of, of Pastor Len or myself or any leader in this church. It's the mission and vision of God himself. If that doesn't stir you deep within your bowels, something's wrong. Can't be any more honest and candid than that. Something is wrong. When you connect with that truth, oh boy, your life will take on a different purpose. Why? You're serving the king. You're serving the creator of the universe. You're serving a God who chose to come as a man. Why? So he could understand your pain, your suffering, your tears, your anguish. But he said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. That's what the holiday of Christmas is all about. Receive that gift. It was given freely. Understand it and be a doer of that word. Now, let's see. We've been waiting. Let's see what's in the box. I feel like Monty Hall. It's a hair net here, as, a, as if I need a hair net. Let's see. Let's see what this is. And the gift is it's Jesus. The Alpha, the Omega, the first and the last, the Son of God, Emmanuel, God with us, the bright and morning star, the healer. Mashiach, Messiah, the Anointed One, the Christ of God, is the gift given to each and every one of us. Have a blessed, blessed Christian Christmas, and remember, He is the reason for this season. Amen.